assignment. He was born to die. He came, he came to die. But what I, what I want to share with you is that the secret of your destiny is hidden in your childhood. The secret of your destiny is hidden in your childhood. The circumstances surrounding your birth are keys and clues to the problem that you are supposed to solve. Circumstances surrounding your birth are clues and signs of the problem that you are supposed to solve. And so you cannot be hating your childhood. If you hate your childhood, you are basically throwing away the gold mine that will reveal the secrets of the things that God has called you to do. That's why the enemy is very good at catching us young. He contaminates your childhood. He contaminates your very experience of a child. So that when you go back to reflect, you're like, what is good and what is bad? What is right and what is not? It's all torn apart. But in the, when God created you, he put the very secret in how you were born, when you were born, where you were born. It's all in there. Your destiny is hidden in your childhood. Somebody say amen. That's why, that's why you must embrace it. That's why we went through this series of, of letting go of the pains and being healed of the pains of childhood. Let them go. It's been 20 years ago. It's been 40 years ago. And you're still mad. Let it go. Because if you don't let it go, you will never unlock it to, 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 to receive the, the, the power and the revelation you need to walk forward. Somebody say amen. All right, Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 1. So we, we are, it's, it's Christmas, so we're going to do a little bit of reading, okay? Just a little bit of reading. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, and for thus it is written by the prophet, it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art thou the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, and thou shalt rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately or privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they came into the house, they, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Verse 12, And being warned of God in the dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Somebody say, that is good. It's important to hear God, amen. Mm. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I give thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt. And there was, and, and was there unto the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrath, was very angry, and sent forth and slew all the children that were born in Bethlehem, and in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise man. Somebody say amen. Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 
Hallelujah. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Bible says that, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, espoused, engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angels came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation, what manner of greeting this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom shall have no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, since I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Elizabeth was the cousin who had John the Baptist. So John the Baptist was the cousin of Jesus. Verse 37, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Hallelujah. Chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Mm -hmm. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. He left Nazareth, went to Bethlehem to sign his name, like, sign me up. I want to pay my taxes. Because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child, being heavy with child. And it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. I see Mary should give birth. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were very afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill towards all men. Somebody say amen. When I wanted us to really to have a context of the story. But many times you hear all these stories and it's just all mixed together. Um, but you can go back and read them again. Matthew 2, Luke 1, and Luke 2. Now, the secret of your childhood, like I mentioned, is hidden in... The, the secret of your destiny is hidden in your childhood. Very, very important. And we are going to find out this revelation from the life of Christ. How, how he did what he did and how God puts everything together in your life. And if you can discover it. If you can allow yourself in the Christmas story, not just to have fun, but to discover yourself in the story of Christ. 
If you don't discover yourself in the story of Christ, then what is the essence of Christmas? Because the very things we are doing right now, we can do in July. You can decorate, have a party, have cookies, and that's it. So the very celebration is, is, is nice, um, but out of it must come a discovery of who I am in Christ. What, oh Lord, are you speaking to me about me in the Christmas story? Now, in Luke chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says that and, uh, he had to be born in the manger because there was no room in the inn. Do you understand that Jesus Christ experienced his first rejection before he was born? You think yours was bad. He wasn't even out yet. And he was already being rejected. <laughs> there was no room in the inn. But I want to encourage you today that, that since my secret of my destiny is hidden in my childhood and the circumstances around my birth, I understand that it is okay for me to be rejected by men. Because Bible says that the stones that the builders rejected has become now the chief cornerstone. It is okay, you see, it, it is, I, I wouldn't say it's okay, but if it happens, I'm going to step up and go forward because you reject me because there's no room in the inn. That's fine. And because the glory of God on my life is too big for that space anyway. What God has called me to do is bigger than the space I'm trying to fit in anyway. So I thank you for rejecting me. I thank you for pushing me in the back so that I can get a head start on my run. We see rejection so painfully that I am being rejected. I just snap out of it. Arise and say, thank you for rejecting me. Thank you for pushing me out. Because in the end, there would have been no room for the wise men. It wasn't just three of them, you know. There were more than three. The shepherds would have had no room in the end. So the very thing that God has designed for you cannot be contained by the space you find yourself. So if they let you go, say thank you. Instead of trying to force it in and everybody come in here, let's make it work. No, thank you for pushing me out. If I was not pushed out, there would be no living destiny church. It's okay when men try to push you out. Some of you need to be pushed out of your jobs so you can work on your business. Mm -hmm. You are too comfortable there. A nice check every month, you know, I pay my bills, I'm okay. But you are not fulfilling your destiny because you are comfortable the very place you are. But when rejection comes, uh, say Jesus went through it, I am in Christ and he was okay, so I am okay. Stop giving rejection such a heavy presence in your life. To the point that it shuts you down. To the point that there's no room for wise men. There's no room for shepherds. You know what? You know, okay. no, Christmas is over. Just kill Christmas. Forget it. It should not be. You are a child of the Most High God. And so when there's no room in the inn, rejoice in the Lord. When there's no room in the inn, when they don't want to let you in, be like, you know what? Thank you. I needed a confirmation to move on. I needed, and you know what, I, I, I was choosing between two. But now you have made it clear um, that it is time for me uh, to press on towards the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So here I go. Allow them. Don't let anybody tell you that there's no room in the inn. Make you sit down by their door. <laughs> please, please let me in. Why, why? God? You ain't got time for that. Let's move forward. Somebody say Amen. Move forward in the things of God because the hand of the Lord is upon you. He wants you to do greater things. Amen. So say with me, I have been rejected, but I'm going higher. Thank you for the rejection. It pushed me higher. I thank God that nobody employed me. I would have been stuck in the job right now. <laughs> Yeah. I thank God that I never had lunch. 
in high school because it made me pray. See, look at your circumstances as fuel to make you arise and go forward. Don't make your bed in your sorrows. Don't make your bed in how people react to you. I'm not going to give anybody that power over my life. No, 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 no. You are not God. So don't let anything kill your joy. Don't let anyone kill your joy. There's no room in the inn. Thank you. I'm going to the Hilton. Hallelujah. Keep your inn. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm moving higher. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 2, it says that he, uh, and, and he shall be a governor. Someone say a governor. And deal with kings. Now, Herod decided to plot against the life of Jesus. But, but we, we realize that Christ was born at his very birth. He was interacting with kings. <laughs> at his very birth, kings were already scared. That was a sign that he was going to deal with kings. That's why we call him the king of kings and the lord of lords. Are you not a king and a priest? We are kings and priests and our God is the king of kings and he is the lord of lords. At his very birth, it was clear that unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders. The very clue of his birth was hidden in everything around him. Herod was nervous. Like every king that comes, they, they want to wipe out any threat. Past, present, and future, they want to wipe it all out so there's no threat to their kingdom. But the very clue that he was supposed to deal with kings was in his very birth. Somebody say amen. And I declare over your life that you will be found dealing with kings. Somebody say amen. You'll be found uh, dealing with kings. I prophesy over your life and that you'll be in boardrooms. Uh, you'll be ministering to CEOs. Um, you'll be leading them in the presence of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Hey, I, 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 we, we need you there. We just can't sit back and say, oh God, touch them. No, 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 God, use me. Open the door and get in there. Let God use you to interact with kings uh, and change lives. Somebody say amen. When I find myself in the Christmas story, I declare that I am seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. And if he rules and reigns, therefore I rule and I reign. I am above and not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. That is my identity in Christ. Somebody say amen. You need to roll into this coming year with the force of true identity in Christ. No rejection, no fear. Twice we heard, fear not, fear not, fear not. We are going forward in God's power and God's strength. Somebody say amen. Declare with me, I will find myself in places of influence and in boardrooms. I am a king and a priest. Jesus is my king and my priest. Somebody say amen. In Matthew 2, 26, again, talks about Herod shedding the blood of children. <clears throat> Every significant move in the spirit realm requires a blood sacrifice. Do you understand that? Catch that concept. Every significant move in the realm of the spirit requires a blood sacrifice. The Bible said, without the shedding of blood, there shall be no forgiveness, remission of sins. Those that serve lower idols do the same. They understand the power of blood. So without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And so for anything to be done in the spirit realm, blood needs to be shed. So Herod was setting in course a spiritual move by killing all the children. Remember I told you about the, the younger, the more pure the blood, the more powerful it is. That's why in, 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 uh, in ancient history, they sacrifice children because of the purity, right? It's wicked. It is wrong. Nonetheless, it is a spiritual observation that they have caught into. So we thank God for the blood of Jesus. 
That's why you must cherish your children. Because the enemy knows their innocence. He knows, he, he know, he knows their purity. He tries to sow things so that when they are 35 and 95, they are dealing with the issues that began in their... The secret of your future, of your destiny, is hidden. It's not, a, I'll give you zero to five years. If you can go back zero to five, ask questions, look for pictures, find clues. It's all in there. It's all in there. Where you were born, who you were born with, what house you live. I mean, if it's, if, even if your story is about poverty, that's important. Every clue you can gather, it's all, it's all there. Because after a while, the enemy knows that he cannot, I mean, <laughs> some of us are just like, I mean, unmovable. You are who you are. <laughs> I mean, you, you like your food the way you like your food. After a while, you become stiff. <laughs> Nobody can change you. I shall not be moved. Right? Mm-hmm. Get back to your childhood. But I was saying about the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood was shed for a significant thing to happen. But the secret of Christ was hidden in his birth. Blood that was shed was a prophetic revelation that he will have to shed his blood for the salvation of others. The blood that was shed in that moment is, is what, what, what was a foreshadowing of what he will have to do in order to bring salvation. He was saved by the Lord and moved onto Nazareth, but he will have to die and shed blood in order to redeem the children that God wanted back home. The secret of your destiny is in your Christmas story. The secret of your destiny is in your birth story. Stop saying, I don't want to go back. I don't want to deal with it. No, you have to go back and deal with it. You have to go back and look at the stories and remember and take and say, God, okay, what was the significance of this? And I kid you not, 99% of the time, you will find something that happened in your childhood that you are still dealing with right now. <laughs> yep. You will find it. You look like you're like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. granddad did that, daddy did that, mm -hmm. oh, grandma, oh, oh, grandma's. It's all there. But because we, we, we hate to process, we just don't touch. He touched me. I know he touched. No, no. Destiny has to be discovered. I can't lay hands on you and create destiny for you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and ordained you as a prophet. The assignment on your life was given before you were born. So why are you expecting someone to lay hands on you to create destiny? You came with your destiny loaded. The Bible said that God made man perfect, but, gone as, but man has gone after his own devices. You were made complete. Right? You were born perfect. And so everything you need was loaded inside of you. And so we don't, we don't have to lay hands and release destiny on you. It's already birthing your spirit. It's already there. Destiny is discovered. Mm -hmm. To discover, you must go digging. Digging. And the process of digging makes you perfect the process. Somebody say amen. Say with me, I am covered. In the blood of Jesus. I am covered in the blood of Jesus. My covenant is in the blood of Jesus. Now, what I'm sharing with you is that the, the secret of your childhood is hidden in your, in your story. It's hidden in your Christmas story. There was no room in the aim. It was clue that he would be rejected. The Bible says that he came unto his own, but his own received him not. Right? So that was a clue. At birth, it was clear that he would be rejected. Right? At birth... Herod wanted to kill him. It was clear that he'd be dealing with kings and governments, right? At birth, blood was shed. The foreshadowing, the blood will be shed by, by, by Christ. Matthew 2 and 2, and we've, we've already read it, talks about the wise men came from the east. Someone said they came from the east. Okay, the wise men came from far, far away following it. I declare in the name of Jesus, there shall be a prophetic alignment. Oh, Jesus. There shall be a prophetic alignment. That's why, church, you have to learn to obey God without reason. Now, hear me. I've, I've, I've gone off topic. So, listen. 
you must learn to obey God without reason. Because when God, before God says something to you, he has already started it. Before God releases something to your hand, it's already been released. So when God says, show up here at 2 o'clock, and you start saying, God, why can't I do it at 2.30? Why? Ah, you will miss the very supply of God. Because it was sent before you were told. God doesn't wait, okay, Ben, are you going to come? Oh, Ben says yes. Okay, now angels, Ben says yes. And so let's release it. No, it is released and God gives an instruction. Now go. Every assignment is already released. Can you understand the perfect timing of Simon, the one who carried Jesus' cross? Three days journey. But he found himself at the right place at the right time. He left before Jesus was even being prosecuted. God has a plan for you. Destiny is released in your life. But if you will not be obedient to God, if everything has to make sense, you cannot walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith. Learn to obey God and be led by the Spirit. Because every time God says do something, the answer, mm, oh Daniel, 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 when you set your heart, the moment you set your heart to seek and to understand these things, an angel was released with the answer. Before the fast was over, the answer was on the way. Go. <laughs> If you want to do great things, great people, don't move by sense. We move by faith. We move by faith. We move by faith. We move by faith. We are led by God. We move by faith. I don't know if, you, I don't know if you're hearing me. Somebody say with me, we move by faith. I said great people. Say great people. We move by faith. I didn't say they move by faith. I said we move by faith. Because I'm great. Somebody say amen. amen. Say I am great. You move by faith because God has already released the answer. And so your disobedience is like you show up and like, God, now I'm ready. And God says, yep, that was two days ago. Poof, passed. Oh, Father, bless me. Okay, go there at, at, at 3 o'clock. Oh, but God, why? Why 3 o'clock? It's, it's, it's the, the clouds are outside and, and there's traffic. So at, at 5 o'clock, show up, God says. It's past you. How many things have we missed because we will not obey God? Because we are waiting for everything to line up and to make sense. Don't do that. Somebody say amen. So as I was saying, the wise men came from the east. Somebody say amen. And so they had left because they had seen a star and they were following all the way to Bethlehem to see Jesus. That was a clue about what Jesus was supposed to do. Bible says that go ye therefore into all nations. Before he was born or at his birth, there were people already from a faraway land seeking him. See, <laughs> Bible says, and of his kingdom, there shall be no end. So there was no east, there was no west. Kingdom, no end. So at his very birth, the east and the west came together. People from all nations came together to witness him. On Pentecost, all the different nations were gathered there. Hallelujah. The clue of Jesus' life was hidden in his very birth. They came from far away to come visit him. Hallelujah. His, his international mission began. At his birth. I'm giving you all these examples because are you in Christ? If you are in Christ, then you can follow the pattern of Christ's birth and life and say, God, okay, where is mine? You can find yourself in Christ's story. If Christ can find his story in his birth, then Lord Jesus, tell me my story. Let this Christmas be meaningful um, that I discover who I am and walk in it. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah, I'm excited for you. Amen. Declare with me the impact of God's work in and through my life will be heard in the nations. 
what God does in me will go to the ends of the earth. Somebody say amen. amen. Another clue. <laughs> Matthew 2, 11. The wise men brought gifts. Gold, myrrh, frankincense, right? What is his name? His name is Jehovah Jireh. Or Jehovah Jireh, however you want to say it. My God shall supply, right? My God, my provider. Do you know Jesus had a treasurer? It was Judas. It was a crooked one, but he had one nonetheless. <laughs> he had a treasurer. So before Jesus began his ministry, he was funded. <laughs> Do you understand that? The provision of God is with you. That he has assigned people and assigned things in place. That whatever he has called you to do, he will provide and meet every need. The last thing that should stop you from doing something for God is money. That's the last thing. Because favor overcomes money. The grace of God overcomes money. God will put you in places where people have saved hundreds of thousands of dollars to get to, and you get there overnight paying nothing. You can rest in the provision of the Lord. Jesus didn't have to worry about, okay, now that, now that I'm called to ministry, I think I have to take the carpentry business on a whole new level. You know, uh, uh, John the Baptist, can you do a website for me? Okay, let's create a website. Let's get, let's get on Twitter. Let's, Jesus didn't have to do that. He just showed up. The most important work was showing up. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is your provider, and there is provision already made. One who is able to arrange a dinner 2,000 years ahead of time knows what he's doing. He says, go to that man and tell him that I need his upper room. And the man said, it's all been arranged. Hallelujah! In the Christmas story, may you find the provision of the Lord ready for you. May you find people in place for you. I remember, let me, let, me, let me tell you this story so you can understand the vision of the house and everything. I remember when I was processing and God was birthing the, the church in me. I went to Calvary and I was, in church. I was in the back, you know, just, you know, being processed by the law. Somebody say amen. <laughs> I was being broken and being processed. And, and all I saw was Hebrews 11. Though we are surrounded by such a great cloud of, that, that, that's 12. Though we are surrounded by such a great Cloud of witnesses, right? And so all I saw was like a stadium. And, and all I heard God saying is, run, Moses, run, run. And they just cheering, run. I know it's painful. I know it's difficult right now, but don't stop because of re mm. <laughs> Don't stop because they rejected you. Don't stop because they, they didn't have room for you in their inn. Don't stop because they didn't know how to use you. No, no, no. Just keep running. So I, just, 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 just in the vision, I'm, I'm running, I'm running. And this is what I saw. It, I can't describe it fully, but it's like there were stops, like barrels, like, you know, like, let's say every hundred uh, meters there is, there is, there is a, a barrel. There was, and God is saying, everything you need. Thank you, Daddy. Everything you need for this journey, it has been arranged. So just keep running. You will get your supply. You run, run, run. The, the moment you need your next supply, it's going to be there. Oh, talk about confidence. I needed to hear that because I had never been this way before. The provision of the Lord is with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus already had all the supply he needed at the beginning. It was already a the secret of your future. The secret of your life is hidden in your childhood. It's right there. Somebody say amen. Declare with me, I shall lack nothing. Declare, I lack nothing in the name of Jesus. Let me read this verse to you, Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60, verse number 9. Just, just so you can, you, you can catch the prophetic mantle of this, of, this, of, this, of this revelation. Isaiah 60, verse number 9. 
Hey, hey, hey. Let me, let me read it in the Amplified so you can catch the, the, the expanded words of it. Surely the islands and the distant coastlands shall wait for you, or shall wait for and expect me, and the ships of Tarshish shall come first to bring your sons from afar. Hear this, church? They are silver and gold with them. Jesus did not ask the wise men to come. And he asked them to come with gold and all of that. But they came with that, right? Their silver and their gold with them. For the name of the Lord your God, for the Holy One of Israel, because he has beautified and glorified you. Say, I am beautified and I'm glorified. Oh, come on, say, I'm beautified and I'm glorified. Say, I am expensive because I am bought by the blood of Jesus. I am special unto God. I am important to the kingdom. Mm. Jesus. Look at verse 10. It says, Foreigners shall build your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. They came from the east to serve and to worship and to minister unto him. <laughs> I declare that foreigners shall build you. People you don't know will come into your life and set you up in the name of Jesus. They will come from far away and minister the life of God in you in the name of Jesus. Hmm. <laughs> For in my wrath I smote you, but in my favor, pleasure, and goodwill, I have given mercy, love, and pity for you. Verse 11, and your gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day or night. Do you know what that means? That's like Walmart. That's Walmart right there. Their gates shall not be shut day or night. There's always business going on. In your life, your gate will not be shut. That means that there's always a transaction going back and forth. People are bringing things to trade and to buy. There's always business going on. May that be your life in the name of Jesus. May you be, oh, see, blessed is the man that is planted by the rivers of water. He shall bear fruit in his season. His leaves shall never wither. That is God's plan for your life. That, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, that their kings and that their kings may be brought. Somebody say amen. amen. So Jesus was connected to kings and they brought supplies. Somebody say supply. Oh, you are fully supplied in the name of Jesus. You are, full, you are thinking way too hard. You are fully supplied in the name of Jesus. Walk in that faith. Take that step of faith. Worst case scenario, you find yourself praying more. Worst case scenario, you just learned a new skill. You have nothing to lose. Alicia, you have nothing to lose. Go. Go. Now we say this, jump. Faith is like jumping from a cliff. If that God will catch you or he will teach you how to fly, either way, you're going to be all right. Hallelujah. One other clue from Jesus' birth was that shepherds had to be involved. <laughs> shepherds were outside chilling, watching the stars and making shapes and things out of the stars. Oh, do you see? Oh, my God. They were having fun watching their sheep. And then they saw the angels announce the birth of Christ. And so they ran to go see the baby. That was a sign and a clue. Doesn't the Bible says that he is the good shepherd? Mm. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Shepherds had to be involved in the story. It would have been okay if Jesus was just born in a manger in Bethlehem, and they went back to Nazareth, and everything was fine. He still would have been Savior. But there were clues that were hidden in his birth. Hallelujah. And Bible says in, in uh, Isaiah 58, like a sheep that was led to the slaughter, yet he opened not his mouth. That was also a projection of what he was yet to do. He's a good shepherd. Your clues are all around you. 
active, the very things you hate are the things you, you should start respecting. I hate that my dad made me have to walk all these miles. I hate that I had to learn this skill. I hate that I had to do this. The things you are saying I hate, I hate, makes you go in circle because the hate is what you need uh, to keep you moving forward. I don't like that. I don't listen, learn. Learn from it. The clue is there. Somebody say amen. God has given provision for you. God has set you up in your story. In my story, it was that my mother had a fibroid, uh, a topic pregnancy. But, but that, that, has, that has been one of the things that has informed my life. <laughs> That's informed my life that nothing is impossible with God. When it comes between things of life and, and me, God will choose me. Ah, my daddy will choose me. And so do your worst. At the end of it, my God will choose. I'm going to come out. You know what? Let's both go through the Red Sea. We're going to see who's going to make it. Ready, set, go. I will make it in Egypt. You will not. So circumstances of life don't stop me because I know that my God has called me for a purpose. Amen. I was born in a year of famine in my country. And so by digging and by revelation, I know that I am called to, to bring an end to ignorance and famine of the word of God. Makes sense. My preacher. People are hungry for the true word of God. People are hungry for the true word of God. Got to end that famine. So that's my job, to speak the word of God. I was brought up by a father who taught me love. Not taught me, who showed me love. And so my, my purpose in life is to love God and to teach people how to love him. It's hidden in my childhood. It's all there. Listen, all things work together for the good, for them that love the Lord, unto them that are called according to his good purpose. Uh, the things that you need, whether you like it or not, are a clue. Because God will, will use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise he will use the things that are painful and difficult to push you forward. He will redeem all things. He will buy back all things, the good, the bad, and ugly, and make an awesome jambalaya out of it. God will use everything in your life. You know where destiny comes from? My name is Salom. Literally means destiny loves me figuratively means god loves me but but understanding that i came nine years after my older brother they thought i was an accident oh but i was destined to be born i had to show up so when you reflect on your childhood and see how, how the good, the bad, the, uh, all came together, then you begin to realize that God was in charge the whole time and that daddy was moving things and preserving you. And we said the last time that because you are still here, you have won. You are still here, aren't you? So you have won. Stop being here and be defeated. If you are here, then you are not defeated because it was meant to steal, to kill, and to destroy you. Because it did not, and you are here, that means you already won. So why are we going back to the palace and digging up burnt stuff? Don't do that. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Say with me, I, I, I had to be born. Say boldly, I had to be born. There is something about Jesus Christ that he was able to relate to both the rich and the poor, the kings and the shepherds. He's king of kings for all people. 
It would have been okay again to just have the wise men, right? Oh, that was very nice. Oh, they brought gold and then be like, amen, that's it. But the shepherds had to be involved. Manger had to be involved. Some cows and some hay and some straw had to be involved to show the magnitude of a king being able to humble himself to serve. Ah, the secret of greatness is humility, right? And Christ was shown him right there in his birth. But I am king of kings, but I choose to humble myself and wash feet and sleep in the manger. Mm. I want to encourage you today. It's all, Bible says that you have all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's all in you. It's all in you. The secret is there. Some is messy, some is stored up somewhere, some is dusty, some is buried. It, but it's, it's there. The fact that you don't see doesn't mean it's not there. It's there. Let's go dig in. Somebody say, man. All right, finally, I just want to share this with you. The common place, the common place of us and Christ is the Holy Spirit. Someone say the Holy Spirit. Because you are like, uh, I wasn't born in a manger. I'm in the U.S., not, not in Bethlehem. There are no shepherds around here. So how does this relate to me? Someone say the Holy Ghost. Mary said, how can this be since I know not a man? And what did the angel say? The Holy Ghost shall overshadow you. Our place with the Holy Spirit, our communication with the Holy Spirit is the very clue to your life. Remember last time we said that the reason why the covenant we have with Christ is so is, is, is better than the blood of sheep and goats is that the blood of Jesus is more powerful so it keeps flowing. Continually. We don't have to sacrifice every time. The one sacrifice of Christ is enough and it's flowing. But then it is better because we have the Holy Spirit who, who when we are about to violate God, say, oh, don't do it. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, don't. The Holy Ghost becomes your check, right? And the other part of the Holy Spirit is that He's your seal. We are sealed by the Spirit of promise. Hallelujah. So even in the blood covenant, we see the Holy Spirit. In the Christmas story, we find the Holy Spirit. In Pentecost, we find the Holy Spirit. The secret for discovery is by the Holy Spirit. Because the task you are about to embark on is not revealed by man. Sir so Simon, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my Father, it is by the Spirit of God. It is not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. And so now that you are established in covenant, now that you know that you have to go back to your childhood and realize the clues of your destiny and see where God is taking you, please don't go without the Holy Ghost. You're going to cut people up. You're going to destroy. Mm, my God, you're going to go to the house and burn it down. Daddy did that. Your uncle, you know, Go to your uncle, take him out. Go to your aunt, take him out. I mean, you, you would just be on the distraction path. Because the pain was severe. But when you go with the Holy Ghost, it begins to guide you into all So God, I see a mess right now. But even with, with tears in my face, what is this? Even when you're the God, I don't understand why. Holy Ghost, say something because I'm done. God begins to reveal the nuggets of your life. That is your Christmas story. Find yourself in Christ. But don't go it by yourself. Go with the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen.